So this is the 1.4 more graph analysis worksheet. If we look from x equals negative 4 to x equals negative 3, that would be this tiny little piece from here to here. Is it increasing? Yes, as we go from negative 4 to negative 3, traveling left to right, it is going up. Okay, B says it is the function increasing from 1 to 2. 1 to 2. No, it's decreasing. C says, is the function only increasing from negative 5 to negative 4? Well, actually, from negative 5 to negative 4, it's decreasing, right? Didn't even make sense. All right, D says, is the function decreasing over the interval negative 3 to 1? No, that's where it's constant. Everybody good? All right, and E says, is the function decreasing from 1 to 2? Yes, as I go from 1 to 2 here, I'm going down. The Y values go down, so that one's yes, finally. All right, I'm going to go over to these questions because they're on my slide. Is there a local maximum occurring at X equals negative 3? What do you think? Um, x equals negative 3 is this spot right here. It is definitely hitting a maximum, but then it stays there, right? So I guess we could say yes, question mark. I will not give you a question like that where there's a constant and ask you if it's increasing or maximum or whatever. Um, it, that's a calculus question, really. Is there a local minimum at x equals negative 4? Out here at negative 4, is that a local minimum? Yes, because it's the bottom. Is there an absolute minimum for this graph? Yes, there is a bottom. List all of the graph's minimums as ordered pairs. Okay, what should I list here? Negative 5.5 and negative 2.5. And that would be an absolute minimum, right? And then was it negative 4, negative 2, guys? Was a relative? Are there more minimums? 2, 0? And that would be a relative minimum again. I'm not going to ask you relative or absolute on a quiz. List all the graphs maximums as ordered pairs. negative five zero and possibly the other two here and here okay um is there an absolute maximum on this graph no this shows that it continues up i'm not going to worry about the other two because we're not going to have those kind on a quiz for us um, list the intervals over which the function is increasing. This is where it gets a little hairy because what students do is they use the y values. You got to use x. Where is it increasing? If I start on the left, is it increasing here? Between what two x values? Okay, and then where is it increasing again? Negative 4 to negative 3. And where's it increasing one more time? 2 to infinity. Because remember, it is the x values. So everywhere to the right of here, it would still be increasing. Any questions on that? Please ask. Okay, decreasing from negative 5 to negative 4, make sure you're using x values, and then over here from 1 to 2. All right, let's go over to O. What is f of negative 5? Is that what it says? So that means when x equals negative 5, what's y? 0. What is f of 1? 
2.5. Does anybody know what this notation means? Where's the y, negative 2.5? So down here, at negative 2.5, the only y value we're hitting is x equals negative 5.5. And you could just write negative 5.5. I just wanted to clarify. Where is f of x equal to 0? Multiple places, right? x equals negative 5. x equals negative 3.25. Is that what it says there? And x equals 2. Those are all the places it hits. So again, some of you got this wrong on the quiz. This is where x equals negative 5, not y. Questions? How are we doing? Is there more on the front? A little bit? Yes. Okay. List the intervals over which f is constant. That would be from negative 3 to 1, right? It's the only place it's constant. What are the x-intercepts? Well, we kind of just said those. I'm going to list them as ordered pairs this time. And what is the y-intercept? Can anybody tell me what the y-intercept is? Okay, but what's the ordered pair? Yep. Right there. All right, what is the domain of this function? Left to right, remember? Is it negative 5.5 or negative 2.5? Okay, domain is x values, and it does hit that, so it would be a square bracket. Nothing else until now we've needed square brackets. And then range is bottom to top. Good job. The lowest y value is here, and because of this arrow, it continues to the right and up. So that's why they both went to infinity. Everybody okay? Questions? Does it have, it does not have end behavior, right? It looks like some of the issues you have on the other side aren't on this side. Does anybody want to review concave up or down or inflection points? This graph would be somewhere in here, we're paying attention, would be an inflection point. And somewhere over here would be an inflection point between this min and this max, and again, this max and this min. So that piece in between there is what? Um, the x value is between negative 5.5 and negative 5. No, so the x's would be like negative 5.25 to maybe 4.5. But what is the shape in there? Concave down, okay? Then the next section would be concave up, possibly all the way to here. Okay, I didn't ask this question about this graph. And then over here, all of this is what? Concave up. Okay, I didn't ask end behavior for this one because it really only has a right end behavior. It doesn't have a left. The left end doesn't continue. Yes. The constant. Oh, go ahead. I, that's a good question. Maybe all of this would have been concave down. I was just thinking of this as a min and this as a max, but it doesn't have an arrow, so I'm not real clear on that either. I promise I won't ask weird stuff like that, okay? Um, okay, some of these has S for end behavior. The other thing is even and odd. This would not be either, right? Because there's no symmetry on this crazy graph. Okay. What about that one on the back? Does that have a symmetry? No. Right, because this is at negative 3, but there's not a 0 at positive 3, that kind of thing. 
All right, so that's your homework to finish that worksheet. I think you'll be good. Now we're going to look at worksheet six real quick. Along with that peach sheet. We're going to fly through the different kinds of parent functions and start talking about transformations. This is really notes for tomorrow's homework. Do you recognize some of those parent functions on that sheet? The peach sheets? Um, yeah, those are the, like, parabola, line, cubic. They're just the generic ones before any transformations have happened. All right. Oh, dear. I'm going to save this for our end of class fun. We didn't do this word problem, remember, on 5B Friday. We skipped it. We really should cover it, but I'm going to see how much time we have. Okay, today we're talking about functions, and it, these are the um, learning targets. You should be able to describe transformations that would change a graph, given a parent function, and create a new equation. You can create a new function based on transformations. I can match transformed equations to their graph, and I can identify the parent function and write a transformed equation. Okay. After today, you're not necessarily able to do that, but those will be the learning targets after we finish this section. A family of functions is a group of functions with graphs that are display one or more similar characteristics. A parent function is the simplest of the functions in the family. Then it is transformed to create other members. We are going to study the eight most commonly used parent functions today. Your peach sheet has more than that on it, right? It has like a trig function we do second semester, or all three trig functions maybe that we do. Okay, so you should be familiar with some of these already. The first one is a constant function, and we don't use this very much, but it would just be like x equals 2. The identity function is y equals x, which is a linear function. Okay, quadratic is y equals x squared, which is the u shape. Cubic is y equals x to the third. Okay, any of those have any symmetry? x squared is what kind of symmetry? y-axis, so it is an even function. What about x cubed? It's an odd function because it has origin symmetry. All right, the square root function starts out as just square root of x in its most basic form. So it goes through 1, 1, and then it would go through 4, 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. The reciprocal function, 1 over x, looks like that. Absolute value function, as long as it's linear, is going to look like this. The greatest integer function is also called the round down function. Can we just talk about this for a second? It is defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x. We like to call this the step function when we graph it, but you need to know what it means, okay? Negative 4 would stay negative 4 because it's an integer. Negative 1.5, guys, rounds down to negative 2 because that's what's less, right? It's more negative. One-third would round down to 0. It always goes less. So be real careful, because when it's negative, what did negative two-thirds round down to? Negative one, okay? Positive two-thirds would round down to zero. Okay, round, if you're picturing a number line, it always moves to the left, okay? Um, so we're going to fill these in. The graph of the constant function would just be a horizontal line. I said we don't use that one much. The identity function 
would be the line y equals x would have a slope of 1 and go through the origin. The quadratic function would be a parabola with no stretch. So it would go through 0, 0, 1, 1, but then what? 2 would go through 4, okay? Because it is not have a constant slope. A couple of you graphed those really weird on the quiz. Right, none of these are the parent functions, so they don't have any shifting, stretching, reflecting, anything. All right, the next one is the cubic function. So what are some ordered pairs that one would go through, guys? Mm -hmm. Negative one. Negative one, right? One, one. So those three are kind of linear, but then it would go two, eight. Oh, it's supposed to be going through zero, zero. I did a really crummy job. I don't know if I can move it. That's a little bit better. All right, the square root function. This was 1, 1, and then 2, 8. Wanted to write down a couple points. What are some points on the square root function, guys? 0, 0, 1, 1, and then the next perfect square would be out here at 4. 4, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0. Everybody okay? It's in the first quadrant only because we can't square root negative numbers, and the square root of a number is always positive, so it stays in positive, positive. Then we would have the 1 over x. Anybody want to try to come up with some ordered pairs for that one? Well, if you put a 1 in, 1 over 1 would be 1, so it does go through 1, 1. Um, if you put a 2 in, you would get out 1 half, right, because you take the reciprocal. So it's getting closer and closer to 0. But if you put a negative 3 in over here, you'd get out a negative 1 third. Just thinking about the values. We good? All right. Then the absolute value function, when it's just linear inside there, would yes and negative 1 1 it's linear so it goes through 1 1 2 2 but over here it also goes through negative 2 2 etc on your calculator there's two places to find the absolute value we talked about this one other day I think one is um, under the math button and then you arrow to the right and it'll say ABS and if you have the newer calculator it'll bring up the absolute value bars. The place that I kind of tend to look for it because it's easy for me to remember is just second zero because it's the very first thing in the catalog. All right so I don't know if that's on your paper anywhere but you might want to write it down. The absolute value, this function right here, is found under math, arrow to the right, and it's ABS, or it's under second, and then catalog, second zero. Any questions? So you'll know where to find that. All right, the greatest integer function is the one that looks like steps, because anything to the left rounds and it goes up by ones by the way so this would go this point would be one one and this next point here would be two two and it's also called the round down function if that name helps you remember what it does okay 
Um, it is on the calculator. It's the same place, actually, is in terms of the math button. If you go math, arrow to the right, it's the integer function. It's choice five. It's not the round function. It's the integer function. Okay. So I don't think that I assigned any for homework, but it would be math arrow to the right, and it says INT parenthesis. Okay. I wonder what it brings up on the screen. I didn't think about that. Um, looks to me like it just brings up INT. Does it not bring up any funny symbol, right? It just says INT. So if we put in negative 2.5, it should round it down to negative 3 or Negative 2.3 would round down. Always to the next whole number below it. All right. Cube root function we will do some of. The cube root function goes this way. Okay. It would go through 1, 1. But the next point it would hit nicely out here would be 8, 2. Cube root of 8 is 2. Does that seem right? <coughs> Any questions about those parent functions? Um, were most of them on the parent function sheet? The peach one, did anybody pay attention? Was there any that weren't, Aislinn? Is the cube root one on there? Okay. All right. We're just going to do one little... This says to review all these ideas from last week using the parent function absolute value of x. So how would we get that if we wanted to graph it on our calculator? We really don't need our calculator because we know what it looks like, but if we wanted, we would go here and go to what? How do you find absolute value? Second zero or math arrow to the right, and then you would just put an x in there. And you could do a zoom standard. Okay. Looks like a V. We already discussed this. All right. Now let's think about all of these properties. Okay. Domain and range. Negative infinity to infinity for both. For range, it's what? Zero to infinity because it's bottom to top. Everybody good? Y values bottom to top. Okay, then it says intercepts. What are the only intercepts? Zero, zero. That's where it crosses both X and Y. Symmetry. It is even, which because it has Y axis symmetry, I guess it didn't specify. It's an even function because it has symmetry with the y-axis. Continuity. Is there anything we can't put in there? Because it won't work? Continuity is based on x values. Is there anything? No, we can put any x value in there, so it is continuous. We could, remember the rule was if we could trace it out with our pencil and we didn't have to pick our pencil up. Um, end behavior. And the other one? Okay, so can somebody read me those real quick with the words left, right, up, down? The top one says, what does this one mean? Y goes up as X goes left, and then Y goes up as X goes right. Everybody good? All right. Uh, was there anything else we are supposed to do? Intervals on which it is increasing or decreasing. I know, oh, 
This one does have two intervals. What is it doing as we go left to right here? So it is decreasing from negative infinity till what? Zero. Remember it's x values. And then it is increasing from zero to infinity. All right. There's another one of these. It's this cubic. Do we need to go through all this? I think domain and range are all real numbers would be good, right? The only intercept is 0, 0. What about the symmetry? This is um, symmetric with the origin. This is on the back of your notes, I think, at the top, isn't it? Symmetry with origin. So it is an odd function, okay. Um, it is continuous, yes. End behavior, we could practice. I'm just gonna use y because I'm lazy. y is going towards negative infinity as x goes towards, okay, that again means down on the left. And then it's up as x goes to the right. Uh, increasing or decreasing? Yeah, the whole thing is increasing. If we were to trace along, um, if I put in here y equals x cubed, and then I were to graph and trace, and I started on the left, if you look at the y values, they're getting closer and closer to zero. Even in here, they don't stop moving, it becomes zero, but then it's increasing positive. So the whole thing is increasing. Everybody good? Yikes, where is it? Okay, so this one was increasing left to right thing. All right, then we're going to talk about the transformations. The transformations of a parrot function can affect the appearance. There are two kinds, rigid transformations, okay, change only the position of the graph. So it stays exactly like an x cubed, except it moves left, right, up, or down. Non-rigid transformations are stretches and uh, oh, included in rigids would be reflections, by the way. This one, okay, would be left, right, up, down, and reflected. Non-rigid would be transformations like taking the absolute value of the entire function, but mostly we talk about them as the stretches and shrinks. Does that sound familiar? And it can stretch horizontally or vertically. It's painful when it does it horizontally. All right, so first of all, the transformations are translations, I'm sorry. Vertical translation or slide of a function shifts the graph up and down. Well, a horizontal translation shifts the graph left or right. These are rigid transformations. All right, the vertical ones are on the outside plus k, as long as k is positive, it shifts the graph up. If k, it was a minus k on the back, it would shift the graph down. Do you remember this business though, that inside the parenthesis it does the opposite of what it seems? So if we had a positive h, it would be a minus, would be like um, f of x minus three, would actually move it to the right three, okay? And f of x plus five would move it left five, okay? Those again are rigid transformations. So you have this on your notes. When k is positive, it will move the graph up. When k is negative, we'll move the graph down. 
So is that changing X or Y values, guys? <laughs> when you move up and down, it is changing Y values. Now, this says when H is greater than zero. So if you have F of X minus three, because it says minus here. So if I put a positive three in there, so it looks like this it actually moves the graph to the right and that will change x values all right if i put a negative in there so it started out as x minus and then i put a negative five in it would become plus five right and that would move the graph left changing x values <clears throat> it's the opposite of what it seems when it's inside the parentheses. All right, when functions are transformed on the outside of f of x, you move up, down, and do the regular math. All right, when functions are made, transformations are made on the inside of the function, you move the function back and forth, but do the opposite math. Since if you were to isolate x, you would have to move things to the other side. Okay, so that's why it's the opposite. So tell me what this does real quick. What does a plus 4 back here do? Moves it up. What does an x plus 3 inside do? Left. And this one has had two things. Right and then down. Okay. Okay. And that is the order you would say that in, because if I were to put in a 5 here, I would first subtract 2, take the absolute value, and then subtract 1. Think of it as order of operations. All right, what about these three? This is taking the cubic function that looked like this and doing what three things to it? This one would make it move down 5. This one would make it move right three. So if I do that one in green, it would be over here. And this one would be, let's see if I do that one in black, left two and then up four, and then we'd have that shape. Everybody okay? All right. On the reference sheet you have, it looks like this. It does say when you have x minus a number in here, it moves it to the right, and when you have x plus, it moves it to the left. Everybody okay? All right. The next two rigid transformations are reflections. And again, this gets students, when you put the negative out in the front, it's changing y values, which reflects it across the x-axis. When you put the x inside, it changes the x, which actually flips it across the y-axis. <coughs> so this is reflected over the x-axis. Let's practice. Um, let's do the square root function. If we put negative square root function, it would be down here. Okay, just so you don't get confused what x and y axis looks like. And it would change y values. Whereas if I had the square root function looking like this, and I put the negative inside, it would become this guy going this way, so it's reflected across the y-axis, which changes x values. So this dotted one is negative f of x, and this dotted one right here is f of negative x.
Does that help with that one? All right, and it looks like this on your sheet. When it's on the whole thing, it's across the X, so it flips this way. When it's inside on the X, it flips across the Y, so it flips left to right or right to left. All right, so this talks about order of operations. And Miss... Oh, okay. This is as far as Miss Abruzzo got. So I'm going to stop here, but I'm going to go back and do that word problem. Do you have 5B handy? We're going to do this word problem that we skipped earlier on 5B. Your homework tonight, guys, is just to finish that peach worksheet. You're welcome. No, the white worksheet. Yeah, the back of the white worksheet. Just kidding. All right. This is a box question that was on 5B, I believe. A box with no top and a square base is to be made by taking a piece of cardboard and cutting equal size squares from the corner and folding up each side. Do you remember? I, we've seen this like three times now, right? So we have a square piece of cardboard, and we're going to cut out the corners. That part's familiar. Told you when we did this the first time, this box problem doesn't go away. But it says this time, suppose the piece of cardboard is square and measures 18 on a side. So this time we know how big the original is. The original was 18 by 18. Okay, write a function where the volume of the box is V and X is the length of each little square that we're cutting out. Okay. So I had this square piece of cardboard, and then I cut out something and folded it up, and it became a square box. But this piece used to be 18. How long is it in between here and here now? 18 minus 2x. Can you explain that? Okay, so the whole thing was 18, and we cut off x on this corner and x on this corner. So it's 18 minus 2x. Can't wait to put this on a quiz. Half of you are sleeping. This is on worksheet 5B, guys. In this direction, because it was all square, we did the same thing. Okay, and how tall is our box? Yes, do you remember when we folded it up? The height came from one of those little boxes we cut off in the corner. So it's x. So what do we write as the volume formula? Volume equals... Can I write it like that because I ran out of room? 18 minus 2x quantity squared times x. We saved this problem for last. See how much time we had. Okay, what value of x maximizes the volume, and what is the maximum volume? We're going to graph it to find that. But I want you to think about something. How many times can we take 2 away from 18? Nine times. So our x value must be what? Yes, because we had an 18-inch square, right? We can't go in more than 9 from each side, or we won't have anything left to go in. All right, so quickly graph this. Y equals X times the quantity 18 minus 2X squared. And my window, what did you just tell me? It can't be more than 9, right? So I'm going to leave it 0 to 10. You can make it 9 if you want. But what is going to come out of this is the volume of this box. So I'm thinking the volume of the box could be pretty darn big. I'll start with 2,000. It's probably ridiculously large or small. Oh, it's not that bad. It's like 1,000 would have been plenty or even 500. 
Now, if I did a zoom six with this graph, which I'm going to regret that I didn't do this first, this is what I get. Okay, it it's a mess. I have to be thinking about the fact that this can't be negative and the volume is a reasonable number. Okay, x times 18 minus 2x quantity squared. And your win it's not going to be right until your window is right. Because your window is way wrong. You can't have more than nine here. And we put in this. So your window makes all the difference in the world because you were trying to look at it from a million miles away, so you couldn't see the graph. Okay. Now, where is the maximum volume going to occur? Okay, this, this does not, off onto the right of my graph, this goes up forever. Why do we not care about where it goes up forever on the far right? Because for our story problem, it can't be more than nine, okay? So we don't care what it's doing out there. So if we find second trace max, and it's somewhere between zero and nine, because I'm too lazy to do the actual. There, I got three and 432. Did anyone else get that? Okay, so it had this shape when we graphed it. And up here at 3, 432. So what value of x maximizes the volume? That would be x equals 3. And what is the maximum volume? 402 cubic inches. What is the relative minimum of the function? Explain what this minimum means in context of the problem. Uh, I really don't care about, the minimum would be out at 9, 0, because you can't have anything beyond 9. Yeah. Okay. Feel a little bit better that we covered that? I do. I know you don't feel prepared to do one of those yet, but... All right, so what's your homework tonight? Okay, we are going to start tomorrow by talking about order of operations of functions. All you have to do tonight has nothing to do with transformations. It's just finishing the back of that white worksheet called More 1.4. And you should have done the book work, right, for 1.4 already? If you have not done those problems, Please do, because it's practicing all of those graph analysis concepts. It's in the Google Classroom.